Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Maria. Shabbat Do shalom, see... Maria. Shabbat shalom. Do you see this behind me? This color there where, where my pen... Yes. What is that? That's a mixing. <laughs> <laughs> a mixing? <laughs> That's a twilight. You... twilight. I, I hope you're not living in it. <laughs> sometimes i feel like i'm living <laughs> with everything that is happening in the world <laughs> okay all right so today it's been a year it's uh it's almost um, a birthday mm -hmm. the first time um, yes yeah, as, as you pointed out Charlene, er earlier it's um almost to the day almost to the day it's been a year since our first um mm -hmm. meeting and we concluded this famous question of mine: Why the Passover is uh, why the the Passover is in different days, and it's not, you know, on the Tuesday, on the second cycle of the week, as the Zedo calendar and the Eno calendar and the rest of them say. I had no idea about the Moon calendar mm -hmm. back then. Now I know. <laughs> anyway, it took us a year, a very productive year, and the. Um, the last two presentations, it was a review, and we said that today it's going to be a QA. and a It's going to be all questions and answers. So I have questions. <laughs> so today is a good learning day for everybody. Yeah. So all this, this uh, last year, when um, we were having our presentations, I was... Um, I was talking to other people. I was watching other people's material, people that they have um, different um, understandings about calendars and about days and fees. And and I was collecting information. Uh, and I have written down uh, throughout this last year, I have, I have uh, written down questions that in my head make sense for questions that they are... Um, uh, they deserve an answer. That's mm -hmm. that's what I'm. That's mm -hmm. that's what I mean. I mean, it's worth mentioning them and answering them. So um, I'm ready to start whenever you are. How many questions? A hundred? <laughs> no, the questions is, are not a hundred, <laughs> but um, it may take us a hundred hours to, <laughs> to <laughs> discuss them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just hope that everybody that's viewing this video out there in internet land and YouTube land enjoys the questions and answers today and that they learn a lot and that they yeah, maybe I have hope some questions and go searching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hope that that's that's the goal, hopefully. All right. So, <clears throat> sorry. Excuse me. Uh, so the first uh, question which I found I find compelling it's it's a compelling counter argument to how we are how what we what we taught people um this last year is um, the inclusive reckoning of time of time have you heard about that I'm sure you have mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. for me that's a very value uh, valid argument very very valid I find it very compelling. The, the most compelling may be even the only one, but anyway. And I have a lot of examples, like a lot from, um, from the New Testament and the Old Testament where inclusive reckoning is obvious. How, how they used to, uh, how, how we understand that, that they uh, counted uh, days. And just for, for people who do not know what inclusive reckoning is, I went online to, to look for a definition. So inclusive reckoning of time is the counting, is the counting both the first and the last unit of time in calculating an interval. That's what inclusive oh, reckoning, um, uh, inclusive counting means. And it goes on and says that Hebrews had no word to describe a natural 24-hour period. Yom means the light season. Hence, they used three days and three nights to describe three calendar days. 
irrespectively of how many hours have passed from that calendar day. It's a Jewish idiom for a period covering two night seasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have a gazillion of examples. That's why I find this uh, argument compelling, because I see that. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, from the Gospels. I see that from Acts. I see that from Genesis, from Exodus, from Kings, um, Esther. When they say, um, go and do this for three days, and then on the third day, it's not it's not the fourth day uh, that um, something happens. It's happen it's happening on the third day. And also, I have to tell you because I did some research on 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 this. I I have examples also from the Greeks, the Romans, and the Egyptians that they used to count in the same uh, in the same way inclusively. And also because I happen I I happen to to know how to play the piano. We do this also today, and um, in music, for example, an octave, an octave is not eight notes. An octave describes seven in intervals between uh, di um, se seven intervals between consecutive pitches, not eight. So an octave, even an octave is the number eight. It describes a seven, a, a seven. Um, how to call it? Components, maybe. Yes, not eight. So it it's it's still happening today. And so yeah, let's let's address this, and then we can also mention uh, examples and go into specific examples. Who wants to go first? Go ahead, Shirley. Okay. Uh, just to keep it really, really simple, there are different ways of reckoning time. Uh, from what I understand, inclusive reckoning was used for the way that kings and leaders came in, maybe contracts or whatever. Um, if a leader came in before the new year, their new civil year started, let's just say it was in the seventh month, because in um, in Jewish reckoning, they, they have a new year start with trumpets. Okay, so the first day of the seventh month, if a king came in to take the throne, two weeks before that new year, he was accounted as having ruled that whole year, even though mm -hmm. he had two weeks or two days or two months. That's inclusive reckoning, okay? And, and they did this a lot. And probably the Greeks and Romans and the Egyptians also used the same thing. But the difference is when you come to a prophetic timeline, that's the difference. A prophetic timeline does not use inclusive reckoning and if a prophetic timeline did use inclusive reckoning then we would be totally lost with all of the timelines that scripture gives us in uh, i'm talking prophetic timelines in daniel and revelation you would not be able to follow them because you wouldn't know so when it comes to and you mentioned the three days and three nights which is uh, as far as we are concerned, the most prophetic timeline in the scriptures. It is a messianic prophetic timeline. It is the timeline that is going to pinpoint who the Messiah is all hands down. No more questions. Those, those prophetic timelines have to be exact. And I'm going to say exact to the moment. So three days and three nights no matter where it begins, <clears throat> is going to be uh, one whole cycle, a second whole cycle, and a third one. Now, for the three days and three nights in the Gospels, that prophetic timeline <clears throat> is starting when Yahushua said, it is finished. When he uttered those words, it is finished, that's where the timeline starts to count. Now, we haven't really gone into this too much with you in the past year, but in prophetic timelines, there will be a speaking voice that starts the timeline and a speaking uh, a, a voice or whatever command that's going to end the timeline. You aren't going to find that for inclusive reckoning. There, there's no reason to have it. So when we're working with prophetic timelines, whether they are literal 
time or symbolic time. What I mean by symbolic time is where at one day is equal to one year in, in prophetic symbolic time, okay? <clears throat> like the many timelines in Daniel, um, the um, 490 days is equal to 490 years. Okay, we haven't really talked about that too much. But when we're looking at the three days and three nights, those are three literal days and literal nights for our Yahusha to be tucked away. He's out of sight, just like when they burned the, the rest of the lamb at Exodus 12 Passover was out of sight for three days and three nights. So that's the short answer. Uh, yes, inclusive reckoning for everything else, it works, but we were taught ourselves. <laughs> We grew up with this teaching that, you know, it was a Friday cross and a Sunday morning resurrection. Well, there's no three days and you can get three, three parts of days, but now three nights. And we believe that, right? But when you put it together with the Torah, covenant calendar commands, and then Yahushua's uh, Passion Week and the proper reckoning of prophetic time, it all works out. So it's a puzzle. Again, you have to get all the pieces put together to see the puzzle. That's, yeah. It's right there. I, um, two things I, I I have here as a response to that. First, in Exodus 19, 10, and 11, it sort of defines what the third day means. And it's not after three whole 24-hour days, uh, period periods. It's the third day. So... Yahuwah says, today and tomorrow and the th on the third day, you know, it's not after three, mm -hmm. three days and three nights. It's mm -hmm. today and tomorrow and the third day. Mm -hmm. And also Leviticus 19, 6 and 7 also shows um, how they count it, uh, the day. And I, uh, it's uh, like a te typology for Yahuwah. I, I, I don't know if um, I have to read that Leviticus for, for people who do not remember, of course, what it says. <clears throat> what was it? 19, what? Oh, just 19, 19, 19, 6 and 7. Okay. Um, where is it? Okay. In uh, in what day soever you shall sacrifice it, it shall be eaten. And on the following day, and if any of it should be left till the third day, it shall be thrown, mm -hmm. it shall be thoroughly burned with fire. And if it should be at all eaten on the third day, it is unfit for sacrifice. It shall not be accepted. Mm -hmm. So today and tomorrow and on the third day, mm -hmm. it's not after three days. And that I think that's typological for um mm -hmm. for Yahusha. But that's not that's not a prophecy. It's not a no 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 uh, no no no. It's it's not a prophecy. I'm, I'm not saying it's a prophecy. I'm saying that we have examples like strong mm -hmm. examples like Exodus, for example, nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, how the 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 third days is the, how come you know day tomorrow and the third days is the day after tomorrow mm -hmm. after yeah after tomorrow and and the second part uh, Charlene is that I have a lot of verses from all four gospels where th I, Matthew twelve forty three days and three nights then I have John two nineteen and Matthew twenty six and 27, let's not say the, the verse, we can go afterwards and read them. So I have a mentioning of three days and three nights. I have three mentions of in three days, in three days. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mentionings on the third day. Mm -hmm. And I have two mentionings of after three days. And they all referring to, to Yahushua's resurrection. So we have three days and three nights. We have after three days. We have on the third day. And we have in, th in three days. And it all means the same day. Cannot mean something different. So that's prophetic. And it sounds inclusive. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. They all, they must all, after and in and on and three days and three nights, they must all mean the same thing. And it sounds inclusive. So I think that's it. It has to be connected to Yahushua's words. And he was the one that uttered the prophetic timeline. He said three days 
and three nights. He did not say about or close to or, you no. know, he didn't say that. He said three days and three nights like Jonah. Okay, so that little word and is really important. Now, it you see, with the uh, inclusive reckoning, um, I mean, with um, uh, three days and three nights, like I said, it doesn't have to start at dawn. The count doesn't have to start at dawn. It doesn't have to start at sunset. It starts where the speaking voice is, where the speaking voice says this is where it starts. And on these other passages, uh, yes, I know we've gone over some of them. Those are not, those people are not uttering a prophetic timeline. That's the difference. They'll have, people these mentions to... are prophetic because these are Yahusha's, uh, some of them are, Yahu, most of them are Yahusha's words. I mean, Yahusha himself uh, was referring to his resurrection in different, in different ways, meaning the same thing. And then Paul also says that mm -hmm. on the third day, you know, he, he was resurrected on the third day, not after three days. And even if he said that, I mean, even Yahusha says, after, no, no, Yahusha doesn't say after three days. The Pharisees say after three days. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, but Yahusha says um, in three days, on the third day, and three days and three nights. He, mm -hmm. And also his um, his students, of course, um, say it. And then we have the, the road to a mass, and we have Paul. Uh, so... So yeah, what do you do with the It's Daniel a good argument. That's what I'm saying. It is. We have to take it's a it compelling argument. Daniel 9:27 where it says all the sacrifices and oblations cease in the midst of the week. In the midst. Yeah. So well, that's good you you went there because that's also one of my questions. Mm -hmm. Because other people don't take that week like a literal week. It's it's one of Daniel's prophetic weeks. So it's a 7 year period that week. Mm -hmm. So the midst of the week can also be explained as three and a half years after that last week yes. starts. When does it start? Yes. Most of the people say it's yes. that week starts with his uh, baptism, with his ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we didn't do that part of the study. We don't have that in PowerPoint, but there are three applications for Daniel 9.27's prophecy. There's the 490 years which is the first one, you know, to get you to the time frame of the Messiah. Then there's Messiah's ministry. That is actually 490 literal days. That's the second application of that prophecy. And there's a third application for the, the 144,000 at the end of time. Um, be, you, you can't fulfill all of the requirements in that prophecy with just looking at the very first application as the only application. And um, we just touched on that. We didn't go into any depth on that. We didn't know. So if, if they look at that passage in Daniel 9, you cannot fulfill all of the requirements for that timeline with only looking at 490 years. It's impossible. It, it doesn't, it's just not there. Yeah. I was, um, I was um, uh, watching a, a lot of uh, videos about uh, Revelation. And... Mm -hmm. What stuck with me, um, <clears throat> uh, someone said there, uh, because of course you know that there are, I don't know, a gazillion ways to interpret Revelation. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so someone said, and it stuck with me as very true, that you cannot start understanding scripture from prophecies, because prophecies are the more obscure passages so you can't start you you can't have as a um, as a ruler a prophecy and with that ruler the prophetic ruler go into the rest of the scriptures that are more straightforward mm -hmm. you should do the the opposite you should uh, take your doctrine from the more straightforward scriptures like the gospels like uh, you know the letters um and and have your doctrine from there, and then that doctrine applied to prophecy, not the other way around. So uh, it's not that we understand Daniel first, that it has to mean a Wednesday. Therefore, with that understanding, we will go into the Gospels and try to find Wednesday. It should be the other way around. What the Gospels say, what do we understand from you know straightforward uh, sentences, and then try to understand, uh, try to apply it to prophecy. I think that's correct. That's a correct way to do it. Well, there's another way to do it as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And that is that if you want to know what's happening with prophecy, the best place to start is Daniel and Daniel chapters one, two, three are pretty easy. Uh, chapter two is a prophecy. It's a vision. It is a prophecy, but there's no timelines in that particular chapter. Then you get to chapter four, which is a story about Nebuchadnezzar. <clears throat> uh, it was He was cut yeah. down. Okay. It's got seven times in there. That particular chapter in Daniel 4 is the key to unlock prophetic timelines. And a lot of people don't know that. So before you get to any prophetic timelines in prophecy in Daniel, specifically <clears throat> Daniel 7, 8, and 9 have a lot of prophetic timelines. And so does Daniel 12, three very important ones. If, if people don't know how to understand and unlock Daniel chapter 4, They'll be completely lost for all of the rest of the timelines in Daniel and Revelation or any prophetic timeline. And that includes the three days and three nights. So we didn't do that with you as either, you know, because we were focusing on Passover. Right. But um, <clears throat> if, if people want to understand the difference between uh, how to work with a prophetic timeline or just um, just, you know, like what did we say? Inclusive reckoning. That's the chapter to study, and it is a pretty deep study. So maybe we'll have to do that. So, so our answer, so our answer to the question about the inclusive reckoning is that <clears throat> in the Gospels, when we read these different um, on the third day, in three days, uh, after three days, and they all mean they all mean three days and three nights. Uh, for the prophet, for Yahushua's prophetic ministry, his his prophetic, yeah, his his death, resurrection, and ascension, yes. Okay. Even the road to Emma to Emmaus. Uh, well, we did that study on that third day. That is a tricky. That is really, really tricky because um, there we counted differently. Mm -hmm. Tim, do you uh, do you want to go in and explain that? Do you remember that is a tricky one we did go over it where it says the third day i, re I remember it i remember it how we, uh, we, uh, uh, we said we said that um uh we count first we wait for the for the for the day for the 24 hour period, period to finish to count it yes. so even though we are on the fourth day because the fourth day hasn't been completed it's not numbered yet yes Yes. But now that's a different that's a different um, counting from how we have been counting so far. Mm -hmm. So basically in Luke, in that Amaze account, they're saying, you know, we have come three days. We've done the three days, even though it was already on the fourth day. Yeah. So, you know, we can count three days. Three days are past. Three days and three nights are past. So that's basically what they were wanting us to understand, even though it was the fourth day. The beginning. It was, it was the fourth day in the way that we count today. That's right. Mm -hmm. But it, it was the, only the third day had been completed. And we find that if the most most explicit format there is in the life of Yahusha. A time frame, specifically a year, had to be completed. 365 days plus, if you will, had to be completed before he, it could have been counted for his completed year. If he'd only completed 360 days that first year, he was not a year old yet. And but uh, with a circumcision team, uh, it's not how they counted to find the uh, the eighth day for a circumcision. And it's not how, what they did with uh, Yahusha. They didn't wait. They didn't There's, go to circumcise him on the ninth day. They went on that, the eighth day. That's correct. Even so, though even though he, ha he hadn't completed his eighth day of, mm -hmm. of life. Of life. So you, that you was also inclusive. <clears throat> there's different styles of counting in the scripture, and you have to find out what style is being counted, what style agrees with the statutes and fulfills them. And if the accounting style is not used, if that or sorry, if the, the counting style that is used, if that slights any of the statutes or any of the documentation, then that style of counting has to be removed and find out how they were counting. If, if it was just one person doing all the documentary, 
it would be easy because they'd have a set style. But throughout all the years and the different people, there's different different styles of counting, and that's this is our this is our challenge on how to figure out how to preserve and uphold the statutes. Mm -hmm. And and we have to look at context and content as well. We have to look at all of that. Uh, we went back to I think one of the first studies we did with you was the Passover with Moses and the three days and the three nights to the three days yeah. travel to the Red Sea, right? You know, uh, when we started out with that, that count was tricky. It's like, how can we not know how to count one, two, three? You know, but we had to learn that you can't count the first day until it's done. Then you can say day one is done. That was what was happening in Luke. They were saying today is the third day. We have now counted three days. Today, today we have three days behind us. Like what's going on, right? That's what they But, uh, but Charlene, it's not what Yahuwah did in, in Mount Sinai. It's not how he counted his third day, the third day. He said today, tomorrow, and on the third day, in the morning. Mm -hmm. On the third day, you know, I, I I, come. I come to you, you know. Mm -hmm. But it is how he counted out his death. Mm -hmm. And his death is the signature that seals the covenant. When when a person dies, the that is a signature of their life testimony and that cannot be changed so again there's different ways of counting and i want to go back to one of the comments you made at the very first of this recording about the word day or yom being the light season yeah i read that on uh, on the website but what yeah what definition. what happens when that word yom references 24 hours which includes the night season mm -hmm. I don't know which which example you're you're referring to. Well, there's an example in First Samuel fourteen forty four, when uh, Jonathan ate the honey, and uh, he had fought with uh, fought with the Philistines that morning. He slew what twenty of them in the size of a size of a half acre or something like that. That war ensued all through the day. He ate the honey towards just before night. They were uh, slaughtering their animals, eating with blood. Saul was upset. They brought their animals to him, to him. He made an altar, and they slaughtered their animals, cooked it, so they weren't eating the blood, and ate. And it says, and it was night. And then he wanted to follow uh, the battle through with the Philistines. Uh, Yahuwah didn't answer the, the lots. He knew something was wrong, so they cast more lots, found out Jonathan had eaten honey. Uh, Saul... Saul announced that Jonathan was going to die according to his vow that uh, if you eat today before this battle is won, you will die if you eat, which is foolish. At that night, the Hebrew warriors claimed that Jonathan was not going to die because he fought a battle with Yahuwah today, Yom. This is at night. And that word yom is used that encapsulates a 24-hour period beyond any question. Mm -hmm. Then you go to uh, Genesis 15, verse 18. Uh, be, be, before before you go there, uh, tell me again the, um, the passage because I didn't write it down so I can go and uh, look uh, it up. Go to uh, 1 Samuel 14. Uh, you'll need to read several chapters in there. Uh, uh, I think it's, I think the best, let's see here. Well, just start on uh, verse 1. I'll find it. Okay, Samuel, yep. Samuel fourteen. Yep. All right. Yeah, just and then, yeah, that that show that whole chapter. Yeah, that that, that story. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then in Genesis. Uh, you were Genesis. Genesis is, is very easy. Genesis fifteen verse eighteen. On the same Yom, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abraham. So the question is, when Yahuwah passed between the sacrifices that Abraham had split, was that not part of the covenant? Yeah, it was part of the covenant. Abraham's part in the light season, Yahuwah's part in the night season. And it says here, on the same Yom, on the same day, Yom, 24-hour yeah. period. Yom also represents a 24-hour period. Mm -hmm. Then you jump forward to uh, jump forward to Exodus uh, 14, verse 13. And Moshe said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the deliverance of Yahuwah, which he does for you before sunset. Today. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Today. When was their salvation? Mm -hmm. It was before, before dawn. 
the moments before dawn. And it said here, verse 30, Thus Yahuwah saved Yisrael that day, Yom. Yeah. That night season was when he saved them. Yom includes the night season. Does so it, clearly, it, clearly, yeah. He demonstrated that Yom yeah. also includes <laughs> yeah. the night season. And I will yeah. agree, 98% of the time, Yom means the light season. I agree, but it cannot be used as a rule. Mm -hmm. Just okay. just my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. That That's why it's uh, we really need to go back and do a proper dawn day study, okay, which we haven't really done, is because that is the cornerstone of the covenant calendar, just like understanding the twilight, the mixings, okay? Um, so, there's a lot of foundation right there in that cornerstone that would help to understand this question as well. And a lot of people don't know that. They they when they hear the word day, that's why we say either cycle or season. A day season is just the hours of the cycle that have light in the sky from the sun. But the 24-hour cycle is the full 24, you know, that is a day as well a 24 hour day or a day season that is just the time that the light is in the sky from the sun because the night doesn't have sunlight. So that's why we separate out the word day between day season and cycle. Does that okay. help? Understood. Yeah. yeah. Kim, do you have anything to add or can I move on? No, you can move on. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, another uh, argument <laughs> that i've heard okay again people different people understand prophecies differently so when we say that the ministry of yahusha's of yahusha's ministry was uh, about a year because he's typologically he's the um, the passover lamb which mm -hmm. must be under one age mm -hmm. other people of course I've I've heard that. I just mentioned I'm just mentioning it. It's that it doesn't necessarily mean that his ministry was under a year. It could it could very well mean that um, you know Yahusa under an under age under one year old um, lamb signifies that that lamb is in its you know in its freshness. It's it has its strength, its vigor. It's it's in its prime, and that's that's what Yahusha was before he died in in its and it's prime hey hang on a minute uh, let me yeah. verify this under a year or of a year two different things or about uh, i i don't know what but what what was, what does it say in exodus it's in exodus uh a lamb 12, of a lamb of the first year that does not mean under the yeah. first year mm -hmm. a lamb of ah. the first year can have accomplished the first year but the second year could not has not been fulfilled to completion yet. Mm -hmm. A lamb okay. under the first year means you're under under. You're the less than a year. Yeah. you haven't completed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It it doesn't it doesn't really make a difference because this is an argument coming from people who understand that his ministry was three and a half years. So even if it's under two years, it's still not uh, valid for uh, their understanding. It they, they tied with a three and a half um, the midst of the week of. Um, Mm -hmm. of Daniel Daniel's uh, vision mm -hmm. uh, the midst of the week for them it's it, it means three and a half years mm -hmm. to a prophetic year so okay it doesn't mean all. Cool. Mm -hmm. all right I have I have another question about oh before I I go to exit um, the question I have um um when was the 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 sun eclipse in the US? Was it a month ago? April 8th. Less than a month ago? April 8th. This, April 8th is when it was. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, more than a month ago. Okay. I personally have witnessed in the sky the slither moon immediately after the new moon. So the next night I saw it with my own eyes. So my question is, why, why the Jews are waiting two or three days or three days to to see to find the Slither Moon? It's it's there the next day. 
I saw that's, it. <laughs> that's a very and rare I, observation, and I do agree. But it but, but it was it was a very very obvious. It was a slender moon, very obvious. The next day after the eclipse, so it has to be after the new moon, you know. Yeah. I I can't say that you would see that as a rule. I would like to find that as a rule. But uh, what? There's no rule with the moon. I mean, one uh, month it decides to appear a day after, then the next month it decides to appear two days after, and then three days of what? I mean, it either receives the light the way it receives it, and that's the rule, or what? What's what's going on? And it's a little bit different in different places of the world. It depends on what that where that phase is and where you live in the world. <laughs> Uh, and it depends. Okay, I understand that. Okay, let's say international dateline and the midnight day and the counting. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. It's not. Oh, but still, it's 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 because of the it's because of the eclipse that I know it was less than twenty four hours um, uh, after uh, the eclipse, because you you witnessed the eclipse, which means that at that specific point the the moon was completely in its new moon phase. That was the timing. And then less than, definitely less than 18 hours, maybe, or 20 hours maximum, I saw it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I didn't see anything, so I can't comment. I didn't even go out there and look. I was too busy. <laughs> I was driving. I was driving towards the east and I, I had it in front of me. That's why I, that's why I witnessed it. It was wow. it was there in front of me while I was driving. I was going from Athens to to the village. I was coming back. So, anyway, just an observation. Uh, I'm saying that I watched it. I, I saw it. <laughs> I'm not crazy. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, <laughs> it's so unreliable. That's what I mean. It's so unreliable. Yes, it's a very unreliable way to count time hmm. i don't know how it was before the yahuwah changed it but now it's very unreliable mm -hmm. that's why the moniker the drunken sailor was applied to it by the english navy in the late 1700s when they their war with the french say that again what what in the late eight uh, late 1700s the english were fighting a battle with the french and they were yeah. losing badly and there is a man, I forget his name in England, that or the UK better, that was trying to get them to navigate by the stars. And he finally succeeded because they were losing their battle badly because they were navigating by the moon. When they switched to this navigating by the stars, the battle turned around almost immediately and they won the battle royally because when they when they navigated by their stars the ships met up together where they were to meet to join in unison to do the battle they because the, the the stars were dependable that's where the the moniker the drunken sailor comes from that battle because the english the english navy attributed that name to the to the unreliability of the moon the drunken sailor why, uh, Tim, wh where did you read that? That's very interesting. In history, and I, I don't know the location. I read it, but I, I, I like I never saved it, but I read mm -hmm. it in history. My okay, to Google, where did the drunken sailor or whatever you called it uh, moniker? Just Google it. Yeah, I, I read that. What was that about two thousand and ten? <laughs> two thousand, yeah. Two thousand eleven. <laughs> It's the Monica. battle. The battle of the, the English were fighting uh, with the uh, with the French, the Navy. French and their ships. They okay. they could not navigate in unison. Is what was happening. Their timing was messed up. Yeah. All right. Let me see. I never told you. Uh, <laughs> what? I never told you that? No. Oh. Or if you have, I don't remember it. But it's very yeah. interesting. So I think I would have remembered it yeah. if you told me yeah. that before. Yeah. Uh, uh, Matt also will be very interested in that um, 
<laughs> piece of information. Yeah. I'll pass it on. He likes history also, especially when it has to do with uh, the English winning battles. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> Both shut, yeah. <laughs> Let's remove it from the recording. <laughs> <They won't. laughs> okay. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask, even though I think I know the answer, uh, because the Gregorian calendar was um, instituted in different countries in different years and different centuries sometimes. So different countries skipped different amount of days. Um the Roman, the the Catholic um, states under the Catholic Church, they they switched around uh, the fifteen hundreds, I think, late fifteen mm -hmm. hundreds, and they skipped ten days. Mm -hmm. Then the pro some Protestant um, uh, states changed the six, the seventeenth century, and they skipped eleven days, and then the rest of them skip uh, changed on, yeah, the what? Did they skip days? Or did they skip dates? Dates. Dates. Thank you. Because the Catholic Church has it in writing that they could did not change the days of the week. They they stated they, they, they didn't, cannot they didn't, do that. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. Yes. They didn't. Yeah. So uh, the, the question the question was no, the days rolled uh, normally. It's the dates. Mm -hmm. The number, you know, it it's the dates that uh skipped. And um, my question is, uh, when we go to when we when we try to go back uh, years and years and years and thousands of years, uh, is this skipping incorporated into the the program we're using, the calendar we're using? So it does this skipping on its own, according to which to which country for which country we want to go back? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I looked into that. So I looked also into that. So I found it for the United States. I found it for uh, France, but for for the for the um, uh, European Western countries, is this the same for the Eastern countries like Jerusalem, like Israel, uh, and like Israel when we were counting Syria that. and well, Egypt when, when we were looking at at least Israel or in Jerusalem, like in the but year do we know when? 30. But it wasn't a state. When did they uh, adapt the, that? That's the problem. When mm -hmm. did they adapt the Gregorian? When did they do the switch to the Gregorian? I, it's a bit confusing. I mean, what? for for the US, you can you can very easily do it. Yeah. They haven't. They know exactly when they they made the switch. When we when we're looking for um, the timing in uh, in Jerusalem. They would have been using, uh, wouldn't they have been using Julian? They wouldn't have been using Gregorian. So No, but now we're using Gregorian. Right. So but... in our presentations, we're using Gregorian. We're presenting a specific uh, day and date on the supposed Gregorian. So we can understand it. It's the Gregorian that we're presenting. Well, but but the calendars, if, when, if you use time and date, some of those, um, the, uh, let me think how to say this. You know, the change of dates is already, I don't know how to. Um, Calculated? Yeah, it's already um, like you're operating with that, the calendar of that time. That's what I understood when I went on time and date and I was, um, I, I think I have it over here, but you can go into the year, I think 1582 in October and you can see there's an October 7 and then the next day it says October 14 okay yes but but but, but, okay. but, but that's when you go in 3200 BC we find Noah oh well we're not what day and day mm, I because we are presenting specific uh, days uh, ma matching specific dates how did we find them what calendar were, were they using and how how are we making the connection with the Gregorian today that's that's my question. Mm -hmm. In uh, in uh, Babylon, mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we're saying 
uh, like uh, in in our last presentation uh, with uh, with Noah, we had a specific day matching a specific date to find his pass his Passover. You know wh what day it was, uh, what date it was when he exited, when he entered. How are we doing this matching? That's what I'm saying. Uh, we didn't we didn't match it to a year. We just matched it to the calendar clues for where Passover would have been. Okay. But how do we know what day it was? How do we know what? Okay. What do you? What, what day and what day it was? So when when oh, when oh. Yahuwah, for example, says this is the first of your year, how do we know what day it is for Noah? That's the that's the that's the catch. You have to go with that last clue of Noah of the 27th day of the second month in the second year and work it backwards. That's the only way you can do it. We don't know the year. Um, not yet. Maybe you guys will figure that out. But that's Tell me again, I, I still don't understand. How do we know the day, whether it's a first cycle, a second cycle, a third? How do we know that? Uh, from wave sheaf, because Omer 40 is always counted from the first cycle of the week from wave sheaf. That's how you know. For Noah, wave sheaf is always on the first cycle of the week, and the twenty seventh day of the second month in the second year will always be Omer forty, and it's always on the fifth cycle. So then, when you lay out your calendar months and you count them all the way backwards, yes, I see what you mean. Then, then you can know because you know there was only three hundred and sixty days in the year. So then you can find the teshuvas, you can find Passover, you can you, you can unlock all of it from that. Okay, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Because, because that counts from the wave sheaf. Wave sheaf doesn't wave sheaf does not um uh, go through every day of the week. Yeah. Yes, right. It's always on the first cycle. Mm -hmm. So that's the clue right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That makes <clears throat> sense. And we have to do the same for um for even um other other accounts in in other uh, in different time times like for in Exodus we have to to match it by the clues that we are being given mm -hmm. to find and, what day and date and again, again events, uh, wave sheet yes. is important because that's the count to Pentecost but then in the uh, Exodus story we also have to go from the first month. Uh, three days travel to the Red Sea, then you have to meet up with the man a week in the second month, and the third month is Shaviot Pentecost. So it's it's like a slide rule. You have to count forwards and backwards to figure out where. Yeah, and also I think we have to also decide that after they crossed the sea, it was Sabbath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And they but didn't that's... cross during a Sabbath. Yeah, that's, that's only a decision a, that we have to make. That factor is only decided after you understand the count back from Shavuot from Pentecost mm -hmm. to Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. You won't you won't you won't come to that crossing of the Red Sea in the seventh day Sabbath unless you understand Sinai first and okay. the manna week next, and then you come back to the crossing of the Red Sea connected with the travel of three days. It 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 works like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you can't, yeah, yeah. You can't have one or two. It all works together. Mm -hmm. No, then, no, I understand. I understand. You start from you start from Shavuot because you know that it will always be um a first cycle. Always, always, always. It will always be fifty. I I don't know how you would start from Shavuot. No. I really don't because the way what we did it, it took it. It took us, well, it took me, I was on it for three years, basically, before I brought it, you know, or I should say we, because both Charlene and I were working on it together, you know, interspersed here and there. But mm -hmm. it took about three years to bring it all together before we could understand. Once we began to understand the layout, that's when we understood the focal point mm -hmm. is on is on Shavuot, Mount Sinai. That's the focal mm -hmm. point. That's the anchor. If mm -hmm. Moshe wasn't there... On the day after the seventh day Sabbath, on the fiftieth day count, according to stra uh, statute, then that, then there's no use us even studying. That's the Shavuot is first. The Manna week. That's the pattern of the seven day cycle. That's paramount. You can't you can't you can't play with that. Yahuwah, mm -hmm. that's his standard. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go backwards. But to say 
to say you started from Mount Sinai and counted backwards, it, it's just a very, very difficult thing to say. The, the verse that you have to start from is Exodus 19, 1, a very important verse. <clears throat> and like when we found this, then we understood how to make it work. It says in the third month, after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, now here is the calendar language, on the same day, mm. they came to the wilderness of Sinai. <clears throat> That's the clue right there. <clears throat> so then you have to know, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when Passover was, and in Numbers 33, 3, it tells us that they left on the 15th day of the month, the day after Passover in the morning. In Exodus 12, they were commanded not to go anywhere, but they left the next day in the morning. And that was the 15th of the first month. And this is saying on the same day as they left. It's talking about the same date, the same date that they left. Uh, uh, pardon me, day, uh, not day. Day. Yeah, thank you. It was the day. 15th of the month in the first month, Abib 15. But that was a Wednesday. Let me use Wednesday. Okay. That was the same day that they came into Sinai. And so... When you know that uh, what day they left Egypt and you know where Passover was, you go count your Sabbath and then the next day is wave sheep. Then, you know, your Omer count. OK, that's how you have to do it. You have to work forwards and backwards. So Exodus 19, 1 is the key verse for what you're asking right there. Yeah, but Exodus 19 cannot tell you what day the Passover was. No, because you have to work it backwards. OK. Mm hmm. And then you have to make make it fit. It has to fit with Exodus 16 with the quail and the manna because it tells you on the 15th day of the second month, uh, basically they're ending their travels and the next day they're congregating. So if you know that every month has 30 days per month and you work it out, uh, they're stopping for a rest on Shabbat. That's where they're congregating. Okay, that's where the quail came that evening. And Yahuwah said, and the next day will be bread. So the, the manna week started on the morning of the first cycle. So all that has to fit with the first month and the third month. And, and all during that time, you're doing a nomer count. <clears throat> it doesn't yeah. work. It doesn't work with 29 and a half days or 31 days. It only works with 30 day count in order to get you to Sinai on the today, tomorrow and the next day. The, those are clues as well that today tomorrow and the next day is also a clue after ne exodus 19 1. so okay. for anyone that has that question they would have to look at that study again um it's it's in there we have another study that is actually that was the first study that we ever did of just those three from exodus 12 passover exodus 16 quail manna and then exodus 19 to 20 Mount Sinai and it lays out really nice it's very very important study. so it's more um uh, specialized in in these events mm -hmm. instead from starting from from the beginning to mm -hmm. from Passover to Shavuot mm -hmm. yeah <coughs> and, and again <clears throat> calendar is a puzzle it, it's not where you find a verse and you go oh okay now I know you have to collect all the puzzle pieces and then start putting them together according to content of what the the chapters are and the context you have to read carefully congregation they're not traveling if they're congregating uh, we had to learn all of these things right <clears throat> that's when they were grumbling was when they could stop and congregate they weren't on the move right we had to learn that that was in exodus 16 and it took months to learn that it took a long one time. word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anything else before I move on? No. Okay. I think so. Now I have a question concerning and the difference between uh, age 76, Kim, that's for you. The difference between age 76, 73 and age 76, 76. H and I'm asking to, to go there again and review this because, because of the gospel account in uh, 
in John 19.31, where it says that that Sabbath is a special day. It doesn't say that day was a high Sabbath. So I have I have been conversing with people, discussing about how do we know that that Sabbath was a high Sabbath and it wasn't a Sabbath? Why are we saying with um, with uh, such confidence that it's not a seventh day week Sabbath and it's a high Sabbath? Do we we have anywhere else in Scripture mention a high Sabbath? Where do we get this this um, you know um, defini- this title this definition the high Sabbath? Because usually, usually we call it in in Scripture we find it as a holy convocation. We don't find it as a as a high Sabbath, mm-hmm. it's the uh, neither eight seventy six seventy six nor um, eight seventy six seventy three is being used for for the first of eleven. Mm-hmm. A high Sabbath for, actually, it's for the first time. It's I'm sorry, high Sabbath. Mm-hmm. We started calling it after John nineteen thirty one because we understood that that Sabbath was that that day was a high Sabbath and it wasn't a weekly Sabbath. So now we're calling it High Sabbath. But it's not what John says. John says it was a Sabbath, and that Sabbath was also a special day. So a high that's why now we're calling it a High Sabbath. Maybe I confused you. Please oh. give me examples where the anywhere else in Scripture where the first of an of unleavened bread is being mentioned as a Sabbath. Or a high Sabbath. There, there is no other, there is no other place. That's the only place. Then why do we understand that that Sabbath is a high Sabbath and not just a Sabbath? The Sabbath, because that's the translation that we have received. That's Mm -hmm. where it's written, and I believe that the translation coming from coming from Exodus twelve. Coming from Exodus 12, where it talks about this first day as a Kodesh gathering. It's it's a yes. okay, so <clears throat> it's it's a special day. Yeah. Uh it's a it's a sacred assembly. So that's that's yeah. sacred. That's but the it's first not clue. being called as a Sabbath. That's that's the point. That's mm-hmm. correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I struggle with this too. I don't understand how it became a Sabbath, quote unquote. In the Messianic Testament, and the only reason I can under the only way I can understand that is the is the transfer from the Hebrew to the Greek at that time. It was a sacred assembly, and they were and they were not allowed because but, but in, in team, just a minute, just, just a minute, Greek, because in in no. Exodus it says that the, oh, that sorry. on that day only work to eat immediately was allowed to be done by you that remain that means that other work was not acceptable that's a rest that's a sabbath a sabbath is a rest period it's not a date or a day it's a rest period and so mm-hmm. i i believe that the reason why it has been called a high sabbath sabbath being the keyword in john is from the translation from the hebrew into the greek at that time and that's why in our studies we have we have decided this last little while to concentrate on declaring it a convocation. Mm-hmm. That's that's taken from the word makra in the Hebrew. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I understand all of that. What I'm saying is that the Greek doesn't say high Sabbath. It's not what the Greek text says. And I've looked um I've looked two different um mm. Greek um what do, what does versions it, anyway. what does it say in your greek what does it say what well, it says let me let me read it uh, john 19 you're just breaking up a little bit so i'm not sure why but um yeah just read it yeah you too it, i i think it's my connection unfortunately maybe because i'm sitting outside mm-hmm. um okay it says John 1931. Oh, that's not it. John 1931. That's the right verse. Oh, no, it is. It is. It says, because. 
because it was a great day that Sabbath. Oh, okay. That Sabbath was a, was a great day. It doesn't say because it was a great Sabbath. It says because that Sabbath was a great day. So that it's very easy for people to understand that weekly Sabbath was also a high Sabbath, was also the first of an 11. That's what the Greek says. The Greek doesn't say it was a high Sabbath, yes. a great, it doesn't say that. Okay. That's what the interlinear says too, a great day. Because that's what the text says. Yeah. I mean, I, I've looked different manuscripts. Mm -hmm. I didn't stay with just the Greek Orthodox. Mm -hmm. I, I looked different manuscripts. They all say the same thing. That Sabbath was a great day. And that word is what? Mega, mega, mega E? Uh, how do no. you say that word for Greek? No, no, no. That's how we translate it in, in English. No, the, the Greek says. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. That's it. Megali, yeah. Big, how do you say great. Megali. Megali? Megali. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's Mehali. the word great. So that that uh, that excludes it from meaning high. It means simply great. Am I correct? No, no, it can mean high. I mean, I mean now in, in the Greek Orthodox, the Eastern Orthodox uh, Church, um, Friday is when they, in, in the church, the mm -hmm. Passion Week, Friday is when they bury Jesus. On, on Thursday, they put him on, on taking down of the cross. Mm -hmm. Literally, I mean, they, they do that every year. They sacrifice him again and again. So every Friday, they will take him down of the cross and they will bury him Friday night. And then Saturday at midnight, uh, they will resurrect him. And that Saturday, today in Greece, it's called uh, Megalo Sabato. Megalo Sabato. That's the great Sabbath. That's the first of an 11, according to their uh, chronological uh, order. That's how we call it. Megalo Sabaton. Mm -hmm. Very interesting because I have struggled with that word high for a long time. Mm -hmm. I appreciate this. Yeah. And and because um, they would use Friday as a B14 and then the next day is a B15, which is one of those convocations that you're only allowed to cook your food. You're not allowed to do any other work including ointments and spices. So then you have that convocation on the same day as a weekly Shabbat. Now, what I understand from Jewish tradition is that uh, two things, two things, that when a convocation landed on a weekly Shabbat, it was called a high Shabbat. That, that's what I understand. I don't know if it's true. That's what I was taught. I've also understood that because the first day of unleavened bread convocation was the first uh, convocation of the new year, the first one of the appointed times, that that was a great day. That they looked when when they finished their feast throughout the year, and now they're waiting for Passover to come because Passover was not a, a convocation; it's it's a work day. All right, that that first day of unleavened bread convocation. That that was a high day in the Hebrew culture, and that could be a tradition. But that's what I've heard. So there could be a lot of tradition mixed in with you know what you see on the internet or whatever. But nevertheless, <clears throat> um, if there would have been a restriction that you could not cook your food on that day either, then it would be a seven six seven six. It would be just like the weekly Shabbat, but you were allowed to prepare food. For that day, not for the whole week. And if you had a bunch of company, you could prepare food for that day. There was no allowance made for preparing ointments and spices. Just food. That was it. So the the weekly Shabbat, none of that is done. That all is to be prepared ahead of time. Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in um, in traditions, um, surely. I have Eastern Orthodox Church, so they bury him, they resurrect him, and they keep him Passover afterwards. So Sunday, <laughs> they will do the 
they will um, um, have the lamb because here in Greece we still have lamb. So Friday we bury him, Saturday we resurrect him, and on Sunday we're we're uh, eating the, um, the the lamb, and we call it Passover because it's a Sunday. Mm. You understand? Mm. Hmm. I'll reserve so, comment. Keep up on your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, it won't burn. <laughs> oh, you know, I do hope that the people over the in Greece, you know, um, understand the Torah messages one day. I highly doubt it, Shirley. Get away from that. I highly so doubt it. Mm -hmm. They're so, especially in Greece, they're so, if they are religious at all, they're gonna be all over the church, mm -hmm. all over the church, like 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 tentacles all over, mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And if they're not like that, they don't care. Mm -hmm. They're atheists, whatever you know. They're new agers. Mm -hmm. There's no in between. There, there's no. It's very difficult. Well, you know, in a way, it's better to be hot or cold. The very warm, because Yahuwah can work with those that are cold. <laughs> more than he can work with those that are lukewarm. So uh, we won't give up praying for y'all's people that are in those assemblies like you. He, like will call them, he will call them out and he will give them ISAF to see the truth. But those, I hope so. These are all questions that they'll have to wrestle with one day. They'll have to find answers for too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, okay. Good question so far. Okay, and now uh, I have another one which I couldn't find. Couldn't find any historicity online. I tried to research it about pilot. About pilot. Uh, Luke 23, 17, and John 18, 39, 27, and Mark 15, 6, it says, Pilate releases a prisoner on the on the 14th, not the, on Passover, mm -hmm. during the feast, du during the Passover. So we're saying that basically he did that on the 13th, the Jewish 13th. But um, and I tried to find um, some um, reference or something online, but I couldn't. I couldn't find anything, so I, I don't know how to approach that. Because the the, the awful gospel say say pilot release. It, it was a custom for for uh, the governor, the pilot, to release a prisoner on Passover, you know, during the feast, not not before. That's a really good point. Yes. Excellent. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the Jews Passover, remember, on this 12-hour offset, the Jews Passover was coming. It was just coming 12 hours later. So I, I guess Yahushua, um, I really do believe that Pilate was not convicted that Yahushua had done any wrong. He said, I find no fault in him. But he gave yeah. them the option. He gave them the option. I can release another prisoner and they said yeah we'll do that we'll we'll take the other guy you know we'll crucify this one but he did give them the option even though it wasn't their passover day yet Charlene, I, I i have a difficulty because i'm reading you know i'm reading the greek text it, it's so and i also if you remember i had exactly the same with you with uh issue with uh Mark, um, Matthew, uh, Mark and Luke, when they say that it was the first of unleavened and uh, it was the day that they were um, slaughtering the um, the Passover lambs and they ate the Passover, I still I'm still struggling with that because for me I can't. It's very difficult for me to read you know declarations like that about what day it is, what's going on on that day, and then say yeah, but it doesn't really mean that. It means that it means something else. It means that it's coming. That Passover is coming. When I'm reading here, I mean, we we are eating the Passover. That's what I'm reading. It's it's. I'm not reading 
we will eat the Passover or we. So it's with a pilot, pilot account, it's basically the same. I'm not reading before on the eve of Passover or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, close to the feast or around the feast. It's not what I'm reading. I'm reading the feast. Mm -hmm. You understand? These are difficult. These are difficult points, especially with Greeks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand the difficulty because we have things like that, too, in certain areas. But it, it, that's where you have to start stacking up the, the evidences and, and figure out what stack of evidence is higher than the other, which one carries more weight. How do you do that? I mean, no, literally, how do you do that? So when I'm reading, it's the first of 11, it's it's go and prepare the Passover and in the night we they ate the Passover. How are you it, understanding it, first of all eleven? That I, I want to know that first. <clears throat> How are you understanding which day so, is that? That? what? How are you understanding the first day that they ate on leaven bread? Which day are you understanding? Is that Passover it day? It says it's the Passover. It it, it conflates the, the, the two things. All of them they conflate them. There's, there, there, and in Greek, pa Easter is Passover. It's the same word, Pascha. That's what we use. So I'm reading Pascha. It's Pascha. We're eating Pascha. It's Pascha. <laughs> We're going to so, slaughter the Pascha. It's so, difficult. So then, do you eliminate the statutes in the Torah where it says that the Passover and unleavened bread are different days and different dates? And different statutes to do on different things. Do you eliminate all that but, because of what you read in the translation? No, because I've I've um, I've heard um, from uh, a lot of different different uh, sources. Maybe even even from you guys. Maybe we discussed that on on that uh, particular presentation. But the Jews and you know uh, at that time uh, they had a tradition of lump lumping these two together, mm -hmm. like like one big feast, and they will call. All and, and eleven bread as unleavened or as Passover, and and I believe they still do it. Maybe some of them. That's how I would read it. That's how I would understand it. I wouldn't conflate the two um, different um, feasts. Well, from what from what I understand, we need to go back to the beginning and look at the statutes. We need to uphold the statutes when it tells us. That Passover is on a beat fourteen, and the first the first convocation of unleavened bread is on the fifteenth. Mm -hmm. You can't put you can't bring them together. You can't you can't sacrifice the lamb on a beat for uh, fifteen because that's not Passover. You can't you can't bring them together. Definitely not. Definitely not. No, and I, I remember that we discussed that, and I was very passionate about it. But there are yeah. seven feasts, not not six, or or eight or seven different ones uh, but still team in this specific um example now uh, both are wrong because we're saying that it's not passover and it's not the first of unleavened either you're reading both but passover day is the first day that they ate unleavened bread it's not passover is not the unleavened bread feast no it's no. So, and I'm not sure that I, I don't, and I don't think I have to read them uh, again, all of them. I, I don't think that they're saying it's the first of unleavened bread feast. I think they they all say it's the first of unleavened Passover. So it's it's the first day that now we're starting to eat unleavened bread. Yes, that's right. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just explained it to yourself. Okay. <laughs> I'm having a difficult time. <laughs> I'd say you just you just explained it to yourself, Maria. <laughs> but it wasn't the first of unleaven. Unleaven. It was. It was. It was. It was the eve of Passover. We're saying that the um, the Last Supper was not a Passover meal. It was not. Passover would start after the supper. The Last Supper uh, finished mm -hmm. the next morning. Yeah. So it's all wrong. It's completely wrong. However, I approach it. I'm but reading on on a beat fourteen. But, that was the first 
that was the day, the first day of the spring festivals that they ate on leavened bread. According to the dawn day start, according to covenant calendar. So yeah, so you're maybe. saying that, 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 that the way they describe it is correct. It's just it's just referring to the eve of that of that event, the first of eleven that when we're Pilate, eating us over. When Pilate was standing at the pavement with Yahusha beside him, waiting about to sentence Yahusha to death. That was a beep 14 of the Passover. It was the first of unleavened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the feast, but the first of the schedule to eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. So in that context, it's correct. It's not correct. It's a day earlier. According to dawn to dawn, it is correct. Yes. But if it is the first yes. the first 24 hour period upon which you eat unleavened bread on covenant calendar yes i'm, I'm confused I, I think it's i know not because because right. the last supper happened before uh, yahusha stood uh, in front uh, with pilot no take uh, the last supper out of it for a moment um yes. on the 14th at sunset that was the day that the Jewish calendar people, the lunar calendar, also ate. That's when they also ate. Wasn't it? No, yes. Kim, Kim, go ahead. I know what you're saying. Because in, in Mark, you're you're in Mark 15, Mark 14, wait. <clears throat> in Mark 14, 12. Just you're saying let me, that, let me find it. Yeah. 14, 12. Yeah. Hear you saying that in four in 14, 12, oh, yeah. it's the first day of unleavened bread. It's the first, it's when you eat unleavened bread, and it's also the Passover. That's what you're 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 that's you're what I'm saying. I'm saying that all all four gospels have the same description yeah. for the day, for the day starting. That 24-hour period when the Last Supper happened. It's a day earlier. That's what I'm saying. They, the should, they should say that when after Yahusha was captured. Right. That's when they should, they should say that. Not before. Yeah. Not the day before. But the Last Supper is already separated and history come dawn. It's got no part of this. But this is but this is the description before the Last Supper. No. This yes. is the description after the Last Supper. No. No, all four gospels. This is the description. This is how we start the day before the Last Supper. The Last Supper happens after this description. Not before. No. Wait. I think yes. John 13. John 13 is probably the chapter that has the answer, and he's the only one that has the answer because Matthew, Mark, and Luke are not clear enough. Um, I believe it's John 13 yep. verses 1 and 2. Did you look at those? Before, yes. before the feast of the Passover, when Yahushua had come, this is talking about the Last Supper, supper being ended. So this is before the supper is ended, and then Passover happens at dawn the next day. Does that help? No, tell me again. I don't think that that's what it says in, in the Greek. Tell me again, John. 13 verses uh, 1 uh, and 2. 13. No, it doesn't say that. Uh, the, it doesn't say that after the Last Supper finished because then we go into a long account of what is happening in, in the Last Supper. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you follow that reading through right from the chapter 13, verse 1. You follow that right through to John 19, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And you will find no indication whatsoever of a time change. None, zero. Mm -hmm. Not until you get to John 19, verse 14, where John announces, and it was the preparation of the Pesach. That's at dawn. That's a beep 14. 
And that is the first day of eating unleavened bread mm -hmm. because you're commanded to eat unleavened bread with the Passover meal. That was Abib 14. And the next dawn arrives Abib 14, the first mm -hmm. macra of unleavened bread. Uh, John 19, 28. What did you say? Verse 14. John 19, verse 14. That's at dawn. Verse 14. Because if you read chapter 18, verse 28, then they led Yahushua from Caiapha to the palace. This is that yes, same we, night that the, the, yes, of the, the Last Supper. Yes, but says, remember that we're saying that there are different um, uh, calendars here. Some are referring to the Jewish uh, feast. Some are referring to, to covenant uh, uh, feast. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We said that John primarily, primarily, not always, but primarily, John is the one who, who, who shows us the Roman uh, calendar, the, the Jewish uh, perspective, mm -hmm. not the other three. John is the one who does that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So... Both John and the okay, John John says John says before before the um, I lost it again. Where was it? 13 you said. Let me read it again. John 13 verse 1. Yeah, so 13 1. John says that before the feast of Passover. Yahusha, Yahusha understood that it was time for him to leave this world. So he loved everybody and he loved the world. He loved his father and he loved everybody the, the way he loved his father. And then at supper, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's what happens at supper. Yeah. So John doesn't connect it necessarily. The the other three connect it, like like that. That the Last Supper is 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 a Passover meal. The other three is the one I blame, not John. <laughs> I see what you're saying because you're saying the other three are saying that that pat that night is a Passover night and it's also the first day of eating unleavened bread. That's what yes. they seem to be saying. Matthew yes. Mark seem to be saying that. John seems to be saying. After the feast of Passover, as sometimes we say it, we call it the feast of Passover. But what we really mean is unleavened bread. We connect it all together that perhaps John is giving a Jewish perspective mm -hmm. of a Jewish Passover. That's not covenant calendar Passover. It is so. Maybe, but maybe. but even I, I'm I'm saying that for John because John doesn't tie it together like the rest of the other three uh, do. I'm saying that even if John is giving the 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 covenant um, respect, he's just saying that before the Passover, this is how Yahusha felt. This mm -hmm. is what Yah Yah you know Yahusha understood that this is it. That that's I'm 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 gonna be um I'm gonna surrender myself to uh, uh, today. So before that event. That's how I feel. So John is not it's not conclusive. This, it, I, it, I, if we didn't have um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, yes, we would say definitely John is saying that the Last Supper is not a Passover meal. But we have Matthew, Mark, and Luke, who are very confusing because this. Opposite. I I think if a thorough well I know that if a thorough study is done on Matthew and Mark and Luke, you will understand. That the la that the Last Supper has no part of the same day that Yahusha was being sentenced to die. It's there's a division there. That You're saying Supper, that it's not chronological. They're, they're not giving the the accounts chronologically because that's 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 how I was reading them. No, I'm not. I'm saying that Matthew, Mark, and Luke did not declare the Last Supper the same day as Passover. It looks like it. They don't. They do. They say it, it's a Passover. It's a Passover meal. No, they don't. Remember, we looked at the italicized words that were added. That is the problem, uh, at least in the English. I don't know what it's doing in the Greek, but th there's italicized words that have been added that make it sound like 
it was Passover day. You remember that? I remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember that because I watched over it again. No, it, it's not the case with the Greek. Yeah, added word. And it's not just one day. It's not just one word. It's it's stated again and again. It's a Passover day. It's when they sacrifice the lambs. It's the day that they sacrifice the lamb. They went to prepare the Passover and they ate the Passover. You're reading about the Passover four times in, in two verses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't then, escape it. Then you need to lay it out on charts. Mm -hmm. Because once you lay it out on a chart, statute by statute, verse by verse, action and consequence, lay it out on chart and you will understand it. But first comes the comes the statutes mm -hmm. and second comes comes I, I, the commands that the passover is on a bib 14 and unleavened bread is on a bib 15 if you if you confuse those you can do whatever you want but if you uphold those you will you will according to your charts you will see with absolute certainty that Matthew Mark and Luke declare the supper before the night that he went into the garden of Gethsemane was a 13. That was the last supper. And it's got nothing to do, no connection with Passover, a 14. He was instructing them that instead of eating the lamb, they were going to eat on leavened bread as representing his body. And that the drink, the drink of the uh, fruit of the vine was going to represent his blood. So instead of eating a lamb, he was just merely instructing them that when you remember Passover from now on, this is what you're going to do. They didn't understand that at that point in time because they didn't know that he was going to be that Passover lamb the next day. So that last supper was not a Passover meal. It was a time for him to instruct to them that after this, you don't have to eat lamb anymore to represent me because I am the lamb. I am the lamb of Elohim. I'm going to give the ultimate sacrifice. So when you remember Passover after this, like you're commanded to do, I want you to eat unleavened bread to represent my body and drink the cup to represent my blood, <clears throat> my blood sacrifice. Wouldn't we say, though, um, wouldn't we say that um, that was uh, that was how he was teaching us to to keep Passover from, from now on because lambs are not will no longer be necessary. So yeah. I'm showing you now what a Passover meal means. Yeah. That's And I'm setting now the new covenant. You, you're eating and drinking. You know, we, we're blood ratifying <laughs> symbolically the covenant that I'm making. And he says, he says, that's in, in, in yeah. you know, for the new covenant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. In order to eat the lamb, you had to sacrifice it, right? But he's going to end all the sacrifices. So he says... You don't have to eat the lamb for the Passover anymore. No. I am the sacrifice. Now, <clears throat> if you want to eat a lamb just for supper, uh, that's okay. But if you're celebrating the Passover event in remembering, he says you eat unleavened bread and you drink the unleavened fruit of the vine. That's what yeah. you do. Yeah. <clears throat> And I, hey. I really have to remember those disciples did not understand that at that point in time. They really didn't. Yeah. They they they, they just had no idea. They they just did not clue in. Yeah. Thankfully, <clears throat> Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus knew. They knew he was the Messiah. They knew. They understood. But they were not just common fishermen or tax collectors. They were they were well versed in the Torah. They understood the Torah. They knew he was the Messiah. Yeah. So there was quite a difference there. Yeah. Huge difference. <laughs> okay. Um uh, yeah, I have this comment. This comment. Um so in Matthew 16, 2, Yahusha says that in two days it's Passover when the Son of Man will surrender himself to be crucified. Go ahead and read it. Matthew 16, 2. 16 or? 16, 2. Matthew? Yeah. 
Yeah, Matthew 16, 2 2 says, And he answering said to them, When it is evening, you say, Fair weather, for the Shemayim is red. That's Matthew 16. Just a minute, because 26. Maybe I'm 26. 26, too. 26? Okay. Okay. That makes sense because I couldn't find it either. 26, (laughs) too. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you see that after two days is Passover and the Son of Man is being surrendered to be crucified. Mm -hmm. And that's that's an argument for um, Last Supper being a Passover meal. Because he was surrendered. He was he surrendered himself um, the night after after the Last Supper. That was the night of the Last Supper that he surrendered himself. Yeah, that was the, yeah. They they had the Last Supper, then they went to the Garden of uh, the Mount of Gethsemane. Uh, sorry, yeah. and that's when he surrendered himself. He could have led. He didn't. He went there specifically to be captured, I and mean, he knew he surrendered yeah. himself. So yeah. Matthew twenty six two is um, declaration of Yahusha saying that in Passover I will surrender myself to be crucified. How, how do you get that? That's what he says in Matthew twenty six two. It's his words, isn't it? Yes, aren't they? Yeah, I, I don't you know that after that. today's is the Passover, and the Son of Man will surrender surrender himself to be crucified. That's the Greek text, word by word translation. Yeah, I I agree with that. I don't understand how how it can be read in there that the Last Supper will be part of Passover. I I I, I miss something here. Mm-hmm. Because he surrenders he surrenders himself. Before the day changes, before dawn, it's yeah. around midnight, I think, that they come and, and capture capture him. So, yeah. So this statement says that when I will surrender myself, the time and day that I'm surrendering myself is is a Passover. It is the Passover day. That's not what it says. Okay, we can say again that he doesn't mean it, it is Passover, but it means it's close to Passover. Mm-hmm. Close, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. But it doesn't say close. It Let's, says... You know that after two days is the Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Mm-hmm. So it's, I'm sorry, you, you were cut off, uh, King, to the most, uh, the most crucial uh, point. Can you repeat, please? Um, you know that after two days is... The Passover and the ah. Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. It doesn't so, say betrayed; it says surrender. The Greek word is surrender, not betray. Hmm. It's paradinome. Okay. Paradinome. Paradinome is surrender. Or surrendered, given up. I mean, can it mean betrayal, given up? It's connecting Passover with a connect uh, with a betrayal or a giving up. Yeah. Hmm. I mean. Is that the same day or two different days? I mean, the Son of Man it, was. That's tra- that's that's what I'm asking, because uh-huh. um, I'm a, a plain uh, reading and understanding. It it connects Passover with the surrendering. But but the thing is, he was always surrendered. Um, it uh, in my Bible it says that he was delivered. He was not delivered up until Pilate Pilate gave him over, because the Jews that wanted to crucify him. They could not crucify him according to their law. They had to have Roman authority to give the permission to crucify him. So that's when he was delivered was when Pilate said, okay, you can have him. I'll let Barabbas go and you can have him go crucify him then. So Mm. Yusha was always surrendered. He was always surrendered. Even in John chapter seven at Tabernacle six months before, 
he was surrendered then, but he said, my time has not yet come. It's not my time to be delivered up. So I, to me, there's a difference between surrendering and when he was delivered. Now, what is the word paradidomi? I might be Para saying. Vivo, yeah, yeah. Para vivo me. Yeah. Does it mean a delivering up or a handing over? That's the secondary reading. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, but that's the secondary meaning. The literal meaning is surrender. Mm -hmm. Th that's the word for surrendering. So, so yeah, the, in English we also use it like that. We we say I I will surrender you to the police. Can can we say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the thing that's is that Yahusha didn't resist. You know, when he was delivered, he he was surrendered. He didn't resist. Definitely, but that's not he, the argument. He didn't say, in my time has not come yet. You had to have to wait another hour or anything like that. You no. Know? I still no. don't see how that's connecting connecting the Last Supper to Passover. I, I just don't see it. I don't know why you don't see it, Evra. <laughs> I don't know why you don't see it. Well, this um, Matthew 26, 2, it, there's still two days to go. Because it says, he's saying, you know that after two days is the Passover. It's Passover. So you have to back up. So you're actually, he's actually talking about a B12. This has got nothing to do with the Last Supper. Yeah. This is a B12. What? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 12. And then Please he, say that again. What? It says, after two days. Yes, this is what Yahushua is saying. You know that after two days is the Passover. Yeah. So the, he's... Mm. This, he is saying this on Abib 12, and you count yes. days, 13, 14. So this, he's saying this on Abib 12, and he's saying, at, and in two days, I will be delivered up to be crucified. So he's saying this on Abib 12, not Abib 13. We also read in verse five. Okay, but that's it. But that's irrelevant to to the argument. They got the connection to Passover. No, whether he says that on thirteen or, or twelve. He, but there is no connection. About, he's talking about covenant calendar. There, no, we're not talking Jewish lunar calendar. I, I, I also believe that he's talking covenant calendar. The connection team is the connection that I've heard. That, that the connection that I understand. Uh, if you want to make a connection, is that he surrendered. The night, the a few hours after the last after the last supper, that's when he surrendered. Yeah. And he says that I will. And, and in this verse here, twenty six two, Yahusha says that when I surrender myself, is the Passover. It's gonna be Passover when I surrender myself. No, it doesn't say that. Mm -mm. It doesn't say that at all. It says when he's delivered, in this verse. You know that after two days is Passover, and I will be delivered up to be crucified. And that happened in John 19. I, I with this verse is not a strong uh, argument. I understand that you can you can read it uh, that with his he he may be referring to the actual surrendering to crucifixion by Pilate mm -hmm. on Passover. I understand that you can make this um, mm -hmm. this connection. See, when you, you can read farther, it like that. When you go farther and you read in verse 5, the, the Jews were still plotting to kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, they were saying, not at the festival, lest, lest there be an uproar. Mm -hmm. And then you read down farther, and uh, he was uh, being anointed on his feet. Mm -hmm. Yes, but don't forget that the Jews, the, the Jews start their feasting, start their, their feast on the 15th, not on the 14th. They're having the Passover on the 15th. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the fourteenth wouldn't be the the, the Abib fourteen wouldn't be um, a feast for them. Exactly. Yes. Mm. So what? So, so this is so they wouldn't crucify him before. on their feast. Yeah, this is this is well before mm -hmm. covenant calendar Abib fourteen. Two days before. Mm -hmm. I, I missed that team. I didn't. I didn't hear it. This is well before Abib fourteen. It's there's there's a, a time frame here that's two days before. This is not. It this is, is not. 
Mm-hmm. Two days before is when Yahusha declares what's going to happen after two days. We're not saying that uh, it's Passover two days before. We're saying we're saying that two days before Passover, this is what occurs. Two days before Passover, he is telling, he is explaining what's going to happen in Passover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. We all understand that. We, nobody understands that it's Passover when he says that. So we all understand how, that it's before two days. So then how come it's being connected to the Last Supper being in Passover? Because in covenant calendar, the the day has the day wouldn't have changed when he was um uh captured. No. So covenant if calendar. if the last supper is a Passover, if you understand that last supper is a Passover meal. Then, according this, this sentence makes sense that he he surrendering himself before it changed to the first of unleavened. It's still Passover when he surrenders himself and he's being captured Do you to think, be crucified. No, think that no. Yusha would instruct them to have to eat the Passover meal on a beep thirteen. That was never. That was not a Torah instruction. He would not instruct them. To I w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, no, I, 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 I would never understand that. That was not a Passover meal. No. No, absolutely not. Because Passover meal is eaten on the 14th, not on the 13th evening. But these are arguments contrary to this understanding, contrary to what we've been explaining for a year. Mm-hmm. These are arguments for a Passover before crucifixion. Crucifixion on the 1st of unleavened, not yes. on Passover. That is because so, a sunset day. The Jews yeah. do a sunset day, so they're eating their. No, Passover. sunset day is irrelevant. It 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 because uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh, play a role uh, even with dawn uh, even with a dawn day uh, no, start. It does it does because that's the way we did it for about ten years, pa- um, because Passover starts at sunset. You eat the Passover meal that night. It, there's two ways to do it. Okay, I've done it two different ways. Passover starts at night, and then you have Passover day the next day. That's one way. Or you have Passover day and you eat the meal that night, which happens to be now on unleavened bread convocation. So there's two different ways. And that's what's so confusing. And there is the covenant calendar way. The way Yahusha would do it. (laughs) The day would start at dawn. And then in the evening, he would have um, the the Passover meal. Yes, that's right. Same day. Same 24-hour period, I mean. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, and I don't know what is the most popular way today for um, Hebrew roots or the Jewish people to do it, because there's two different ways, and they're completely opposite. And uh, all the camps that I've been at, when, you know, people say, I'll just give a date, you know, Passover is April 25. The first question that always came out of my mouth was, well, do we do Passover on April 24th at sundown? Or are we doing Passover on meal on April 25th? Nobody ever knew. That's why a lot of the calendars that are coming out now in the last couple of years, two to three years, and my calendar too on the wall says Passover starts at sundown on this day because of that confusion that's out there. A lot yeah. of confusion over this sunset stuff. So it it depends. Um, we're talking to an audience here now in internet land, <laughs> and I, I don't know what they're doing. You know, So they're going to have to figure out which way they're doing it and how it's in conflict with covenant calendar. Because they, they could be eating the Passover meal at night on the Beeb 13. When sunset comes, they call that a Beeb 14. And then they do their Passover day, which in a way you're you're eating the lamb before you actually slaughter it. Before you sacrifice it, yes. yes. Or if you do the other way. You sacrifice the lamb and then you eat it at nights after sunset that night. But now that's already a beep 15. So that doesn't. Yeah, but yeah then- what we were discussing the previous time. Now you, you have one uh, holiday, one feast, the, the two together. Now that's one, not two. That's what we were saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Um, yeah. That's why it's so confusing. It's not correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And one last one. Let's see what I'm saying here. Uh, oh yes, I don't remember who mentioned that. Um, 
with um, Nicod- uh, Nic- it was Nicodim- my it was Nicodemus who buried him. My 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 head it, uh, went blank blank. Joseph, who was it? Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph of Arimathea. Yes, I'm sorry. Joseph of Arimathea, not Nicodemus. Yeah, mm-hmm. Nicodemus was with him. No. Yes, he brought. Uh, him. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so see. these two people would have touched a dead body. They wouldn't be able to keep a Passover. Am I correct? Right. They wouldn't be able to eat. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. So these two people wouldn't care at all what they did. They're they're dealing with a dead body. <laughs> they're having Passover next month, correct? Probably. I'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> but but maybe their Passover the next month didn't include a lamb. It would have been just the bread and the drink. Oh yes. Yeah. If that is the case, yeah. But then the okay. the other question arises: Was Yehusha's body unclean? Because he had no sin at all. That that tomb where no man had ever laid in there. No sinful man had ever laid in there. You know, so that's the other question. Was he unclean? Well, he was still dead. Though. He was dead. Well, he was still dead. <laughs> and then I read I read a very nice article. It was unrelated with um, Calendar and, and all. And um, they were saying that um, Yahusha was the Passover lamb. And he was also the Passover goat because he was un, um, unblemished and comp- with no sin at all, like a lamb. But he took the sin of the whole world on him. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, he was the goat like the also day when he was crucified, mm-hmm. on the day that he was crucified. Mm-hmm. So so that's why Yahuwah uh, gave the instruction that you can all either get a lamb or a goat for a Passover. Yes, because Yahusha was... would be both. Yeah, on the on the tree. Yeah, that's interesting because it does say that in Exodus twelve, choose from a lamb or a goat, but you don't yeah. often hear people say anything about a goat. It's always a lamb. No, and they he was announced. Lamb. He was announced as the Lamb of Elohim. Yeah, you know. By Again, Jesus. he's always being referred as a lamb because himself he was the lamb. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying that. But the significance of the cross also included the goat um, typology, yeah. the, um, the the tree that 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 moment on the tree. Mm-hmm. I mean, his life he he was always a uh, lamb, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those were good questions. Yeah. It's good you bring up about the goat because that's a point that's not spoken of very often at all. It's good. Mm. Yeah, you hear some people who even uh, go back and forth about, oh, on Passover, you shouldn't have a lamb. You're not supposed to eat lamb. Don't have it at your table. But, well, what about a goat? Then it, it does <laughs> <laughs> Some people say, yes, you have to eat a lamb. You have to have it at your table. It's It's a must. Well, what about a goat? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's the African people seem to like the goat. We've, yeah. we've seen that, and Greeks like oh. the goat. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> half of half of the Greeks have lamb. Um, we we put actually here. This is this is this is where we. We cook it uh-huh. uh, on a spit. Uh, we underneath for uh, twelve. Oh, not twelve. For eight hours, you know, slowly, slowly. And half of the Greeks have a lamb, and half of the Greeks have a goat. Oh, interesting. For Passover, eight hours. Sunday. Is that eight hours so, for a lamb or a goat, or just a goat? Uh, it's uh, it's an approximation. It depends. It depends how big is your lamb or goat. It depends, you know, how strong is your fire. Mm-hmm. It depends. But, but I'm saying it's it's a long process. I mean, they, they they start early in the morning. They start preparations at five five thirty in the morning, so they can um, get that fire started. And two hours, they will get their charcoal, and then they will put them um, 
you know, mm. the lamb or the goat. And it will start the process. And then the whole family and the whole neighborhood, like 50 people will come <laughs> and they will start um, 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 uh, chopping, not chopping, um, uh, getting, uh, uh, you know, meat off, off the lamb while it's it's being roasted. Mm. Um, you know, the, the pieces that they already cooked. Yeah. And you and you start eating lamb from ten o'clock in the morning till four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon. You're eating lamb or goat. <laughs> That's what you're doing. <laughs> it's very religious. That. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that. That'll be good. Every culture is different. It's interesting. It's a nice tradition. I mean, you know, they're they're having a good time. It's it's the um, it's the religious part that bothers me, and I I don't want to I didn't want to take part this this I didn't I didn't need I was here I was here because my my landlady is a very good friend of mine. Well, I just think it would be really fun to to hear from some of the um, people that are watching the videos and to send their questions in, you know, so that we know what they're thinking out there or are they looking? Yeah, I hope they do. Yeah. You know, and so that we can help them, we can answer them. And maybe we always learn something as well. We always learn a lot as we're working through. I hope they do. Yeah. But so been... in case they don't, mm -hmm. uh, what uh, what uh, next, next, um, we said that our next presentation would be, would it be John 7? No, we, we really Sh feel that we should do... Uh, Six. Sorry. Matthew 28, 1, Tim, I really Oh, yes, yes. That yes, this yes, yes. is pretty important. I know, you, do you think Teshuba would be ready? I think so. For it's two in weeks? two weeks, isn't it? In two weeks. That would be... Oh, whenever you want, I'm... I'm. Uh, well, let's just say this. If Teshuva isn't ready uh, for two weeks, we'll do Matthew 28, 1. How does that sound? It's a okay. really fun... Right. And um, we haven't done a lot with the Dawn Day, and that is a cornerstone of the calendar. So, and there could be still a lot that are doing sunset or sunrise. Why, why are you saying that? I mean, I had no idea about these things, and I feel very edified. You know, that, that what we've done are it's very edifying about the Dawn. That I don't know why you think that we haven't done enough. I feel, I feel, I understand it perfectly. Like I have no, no gap, no, no, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And also the first, the first two presentations, we, we did go, mm -hmm. um, you did explain the mixing. We can do it again if you want, if you have a specific presentation, but I don't think that you haven't already done a very good job mm -hmm. at explaining why the day starts at dawn. Well, I just know with the Zadok Enoch calendars, they're doing sunrise and although it's closer, not all of them, not all of them. Some of them are doing sunset as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, there's a lot now. Never used to be, but now there is. Now there's a mix with sunset. And uh, that the Zadok calendar <clears throat> is just growing very, very quickly, very strong. So people that are getting caught up in that, they don't understand. Well, why isn't it sunrise? You know, they don't understand that dawn, the first light of dawn is not the same as sunrise. So okay, so you would like to do the um, the the dawn uh, day start before the the shuva, even if the shuva is ready. I'll leave that up to to Tim, and you know, it doesn't doesn't. Matter. Okay, let it be a surprise. Don't, don't tell us. Next time we'll find out. <laughs> I like surprises. <laughs> yes, I like surprises. So don't tell us. You decide and surprise us next time. Yeah. Uh, whatever you do, it's gonna be amazing. So I, I you know. I, it's fine. Well, sometimes, you know, your be best made plans go astray and you're just not quite ready because you know, we just done the first day. Exactly. So we leave it open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever is ready, we'll do it. <laughs> okay. And then, and then, yes, I think maybe Matthew 28, 1, everybody would really enjoy that. It's a wonderful study and it's yeah. working in the Gospels and people do like it. And then it would be nice to get into John 7. That's quite a few sessions. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. So I believe now is a good time to end the recording. Okay. Well, we'll see you in two weeks.